Okay, I want us to open up this morning in 2 Corinthians chapter 4. <clears throat> um, we want to... I think begin to do something this morning that I want to... I may continue on um, when I'm back in a couple of weeks. But it's about rightly dividing the word of truth. And... Um, it's 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 a real problem that that we've seen for people. So we're going to get in and we're going to begin to look at some things. And it'll answer some questions. Um, for one, it'll you know we want to look at things like what is the difference between you know God in the new and in the old, and why is He so different? And there's different theories. You know, one is that when Jesus came, He changed. He was one way, and then God Himself changed. And then there's another one that said, no, God. Uh, did not change. He's still a God of justice and very capable of, of, of wrath towards sin, but Jesus has stopped that and shielded that from, from us who uh, believe. However, he still has wrath reserved um, later on for, for those who don't. Uh, there are those who, who and, and they all have valid points that you can find, uh, that you can find scripturally. And that's the whole problem is that is that it, it's, it's, it's a very hard thing because have you noticed that whenever you've had, if you've ever had a disagreement on scripture or doctrine, that, um, you know, they've got, they can find scripture too, <laughs> you know, for, 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 what, they, for what, they, uh, what they believe and how they see it and how they perceive it. And so it's, it's understandable, but there is a way to rightly divide this. There is a way to see this, and that's what I, I, I hope to do with this. Um, because... Um, the way that the Word of God has been approached, this is why there's such a, uh, the way that it has been approached before has, has caused some confusion, has caused some trouble in people's minds that affected their faith toward God. And, uh, and it needs to be cleared up. It has to be dealt with. And what we're seeing, it, it, with, with it, it, there, is, there is something spiritually happening to many of us in the body, and it, it is a growing thing. It is spreading across the world that people are, are beginning to fall in love with God. Christians are beginning to fall in love with God in ways they never have before because of clarity that's coming to them about who God really is. And they're coming because of the truth of this gospel that they're seeing and the beauty of this gospel. They're coming to actually know God personally in a way that they never have before, in a depth, in a reality that they never have. And it's affecting them in glorious, wonderful powerful ways. Um, but where it gets hindered in people, where people struggle and stumble with it, is over, um, it's, it's a thick book. <laughs> and we can find a lot of things to contradict some of the things we say about the goodness and the grace and the love and, the, you know, uh, and, and so on. So we want to, want to do our best to look at that and deal with that. Um, first of all, I, I want us to understand <clears throat> that when, when there was just the Old Testament, and the Old Testament, understand, was, was the words of, of, of the Jewish people, a Jewish religion, and, and they're relating to God and God with them. Um, you know, the whole world did not have the ministry of the Old Testament. They didn't have the ministry of the prophets and the law and all that. They had their own things going on. Many of them were, were just were heathen. Many of them had pagan beliefs. Many of them, and 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 basically, but there were um, uh, similarities in a lot of them. That basically, their understanding and their their perception about a creator or the creator um, was pretty much in line. That he, you know, he they just didn't know him completely. Uh, the Bible does reveal that nobody has seen God at any time. Except when the Son came, He revealed Him to us. So there was an unveiling of God. Jesus is the expressed image of the Father. If you want to see the Father, now notice this, they had all the scriptures, they had the rabbis, they had the teachings, but in all of that, people were saying, show us the Father. Because they couldn't see Him. Great teachings, discussions, debates, scriptures, prophecies. I mean, these, and, and, and a lot of these people, they were very... Uh, involved in, in, in digging this word. They, but they said, show us the Father. 
And he says, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. Let's simplify this. And that was a good thing right there because what they were doing before is they had, they had the Torah, they had the law, they had the, they had, they had the prophets. And, and, and you need to understand also that even among the Jews, it's that way today, it was that way in the days of Jesus. They were not this one unified belief. They had basics in common, but there but, but they were, they were many different sects, divisions, um, uh, denominations, if you will, we would call it, just like there is in Christianity. There were different schools of thought among the Jews. We see a number of them mentioned, even in Jesus' day. And, 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 and the reason was because they, knew, they believed, they, they <coughs> excuse me, in their temp, part of their temple worship was that it became a central place of much debate and engagement and people and experts of the law were continually debating and talking about and hashing over and rehashing and trying to come to consensus and, and agreements and perception. They had been doing this for years and years and years and years and, and, and continually they're trying to understand this Old Testament because it looks like, you know, People have different perceptions of it. There's different scriptures that say this and that and the other. So in their, 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 with these wise people, with their natural minds, they're trying to, 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 to understand this. And there, and there came a common um, consensus, if you will, that the scriptures, the Hebrew scriptures, uh, could not be understood without the oral law or the, or the things that were explained by the teachers and the rabbis. So that was a very important function of them. They even began to understand that no one can really get this just by itself, by reading it, but what they believed was that it, it, it took something else, but they didn't, they didn't, they didn't uh, say it was the Holy Spirit that would reveal it. They didn't, certainly didn't say it was Christ the Messiah that would, that would, that would reveal it. They did, what they came up with was the best that they could come up with is that it's us leaders, us teachers, that we, we, um, uh, we speak on it, we comment on it. We, and so they added all these other writings. The Talmud, part of it was written around 200. It was added in. 300 years later, they added some more. And they're, they're, they began to add these, these, these rabbinical um, uh, recorded messages because before that, it was just, it was spoken. They were just spoken. They were speaking and teaching, and people would quote them. They began to write these things down because they thought it was very, very, very important. But, but, but even then, they acknowledged that this is mysterious here. We don't, we don't we're, we're, we're seeing in part, and we're trying to, trying to put this whole thing together and trying to get it precise and trying to get the perception. So they continually argued and debated about it, trying to understand um, these things. Then here comes Jesus. Here comes Jesus. In fact, in fact, before we read 2 Corinthians 4, let's actually read John chapter 1. And I love, love, love this passage of Scripture in John chapter 1, speaking of Jesus. And I wanted to start at verse 4, but it's just so good. Um, It's beautiful from verse 1. In the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God and the Word was God. It was Him. He was in the beginning with God and all things were made through Him and without Him nothing was made that was made. He is the One. He is God. He's Creator. He is it. He's perfection. Verse 4. In Him was life. And the life was the light of men. Say the light. See, this is what we want to look at. The light came. When Jesus came, I want us to look at it from this, from, from this perspective. We're looking at the light came into a dark place. In him was life, and the life was the light of men, and the light shined in the darkness, and the darkness did not comprehend it. It's kind of a hard word. Some say it means it did not understand it. Other, it could also be translated, they didn't, it did not overcome it. Either way, the light wins. <laughs> um, Verse 6, there was a man sent from God whose name was John, and he came for a witness to bear witness of the light. Notice John didn't come to establish rule and law. He didn't come to establish his own baptism, even though he baptized for, his for, the, for, for the purposes that he had, but he came to bear witness of the light. And that was the true light, which gives light to every man that comes into the world, coming into the world. Uh, and then, of course, then I love... Verse 14, it says, And the word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld 
His glory, the glory as the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and full of truth. The light came into the world. All of this darkness and obscurity where all the debates and the mysteries of this old, these scriptures that we had and men of old had spoken of and the stories and the allegories and, the, and all the, the teachings and the God said and they said and all these things that were done and they're all hashing and rehashing. Then the light comes and we look at him and we saw the one who was full of grace and full of truth. The one who could put all the debate to rest. The, ex the exact expression to mankind of our creator, our father, the one who created us. Because love wanted an outlet for his love. And of course, we saw that witness when Jesus came to bear witness of, 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 of the father. What did he express? What did he say with his own words? Your father loves you. Your father loves you. Your father knows. Your father cares. He cares for you. Your father, your heavenly father. First of all, remember just the fact that he would call him my father and your father was, was, was blasphemous. You realize he, 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 he virtually was crucified because he said God was his father. They say that's blasphemy. You're guilty of blasphemy because calling God your father makes you equal with God. <laughs> but there were many other times he said, your father. Hmm? Now remember, they didn't, uh, they, 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 he was so, so distant from them. He was so mysterious. He was too, too holy. He was too different. He, 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 was, he was too pure. He was too perfect that they, they, of course, they had to offer the sacrifices and do all those things. And, they, and, and he was so pure and holy and distant that they, they wouldn't even call him by the name that they, that they had for him. And they wouldn't even write it down on paper. To this day, you'll, you'll find people that believe in, in, in either, either Jews or believe in uh, Jewish roots kind of a thing and they won't even write the, the word God on paper they'll say G dash D as if it were a cuss word you know <laughs> but 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 it's too holy for them in their in their perception and so Jesus comes along calling him daddy hmm? and, and and then it says in verse 16 and of his fullness of his fullness have we all received, and grace for grace. Because the law was given through Moses, but grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. And no one had seen God at any time, but the only begotten Son who is in the bosom of the Father, he has declared him to us. Now, now get the picture of this that we want to set here, that the world was in darkness when Jesus came. Jesus is the light of the world, and he came to, to bring light. Just like the picture we have in Genesis chapter 1, when the earth was without form and void, useless, <laughs> was without form and void, and darkness was on the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God hovered above the waters, and God looked upon it, and God said, let there in that darkness let there be light in that creation when he said let there be light the light was and he says and the, and, the, and the light was and God divided the light from the darkness and that's what Jesus is doing here we see that magnanimous thing let there be light boom there was darkness covering the face of the, of the, of the earth no one had seen God at any time there was no not real knowledge of God and Jesus came and they saw him. Now, one of the reasons so many people had trouble with Jesus was because it went against the grain of their perception of what God and who God was. They did it many times. We know that. It caused much trouble. But if we look at the word, we see it explained. We have to understand now, when we look at this, that Jesus is that expression. If you want to see the Father, look at Jesus. He lived an earthly, physical life and walked it out and demonstrated it and showed us and, and taught us about the whole thing and showed us the, the, the heart, the character, the ways, the nature, the love of the Father. And so there are contradictions or things that look contradictory because we see Jesus, for instance, treating 
an adulteress in a way that the Old Testament, the Old Testament God and their perception would not have had it. In the Old Testament, they, they thought God wanted them stoned. And there's good reason to think that. It's written. But Jesus showed them, he said, you want to see the Father, look at me. And he, and he doesn't have her stoned. You want to see the Father, look at me. Look at how he treated the people. Look at how he did. What did he do? He went around doing good, doing good, and healing all that were oppressed of the devil. For God, God was with him. He was God in manifestation upon the earth. Doing the will of God. Lord, if you will, you can make me whole. <laughs> of course I will. <laughs> of course it's my will. <laughs> I love you. <laughs> I'm for you. But why do people struggle with, with, with God's will? Even, even when they hear, they read the New Testament, and, they, and, they're, and they're wondering, but, but, but is, is God really for me? And it seems like, you know, and, 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 and do I have some bad things coming because of what I've done or what I've, what I've sown? And, 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 and what, what about, is, I know God's a God of love, but, but he's also a God of justice. And, and, all, all this, and all this stuff comes in that can be easily clarified if we would start from the right place. Number one, start with the expression of God, Jesus. We start there. One reason people have trouble is because, because our Christian education, predominantly over the years in the body of Christ, has been, honestly, that we have not rightly divided the scriptures. Now, I've got to say right off the bat, so you understand where I'm going, all scripture is inspired by God, and all scripture is profitable for doctrine, correction, instruction, and righteousness, and so we, we, it, it all is. But the problem is, the reason that people have difficulty, and they look to be contradictory things, is because they don't rightly divide it and put it in its place. So number one, we don't start, we don't start with what God was doing to the Jews. Jesus came out of that, and we have that, we have that basis of that history uh, that led up to, to Christ coming into the world. But where it starts for us is Jesus, the expression of God. And when we start with Jesus, the expression of God, we're starting with God. We're going right back to how God is and was before all creation. With all, all the confusion that comes later with the fall of man and all these laws that get put in and all that other stuff. We start with that. Understand this, that the New Testament, the New Testament is God and Christ revealed. The Old Testament is God and Christ concealed. There's a veil over it. Hmm? If we think that the Old Testament is the revealing of God, then we miss it. The New Testament is the revealing of God. Hmm? The Old Testament is the concealing. So we see that's why there are, 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 are differences there. And so, and so it had to be explained. And Jesus and Paul would say it too. They would say, listen, the law and the prophets, they speak of them. But they didn't know that by and large. Most people didn't. They, when Jesus came, they missed him because their eyes were blinded. In fact, I want us to look at that now. Now we can go to 2 Corinthians 4. Their eyes were blinded, and, you know, when we look at who, what Jesus did, what he demonstrated and what he taught, a, a predominant teaching of his, and Jesus sat and taught them, saying, the kingdom of God is this way. The kingdom of God is that way. In the world they do this, but in the kingdom it's not so. The kingdom is like this. The kingdom is like that. So you are this way in the kingdom of your father, in the kingdom, in the kingdom, in the kingdom. Jesus, are you the king of the Jews? Pilate said, he said, my kingdom's not of this world. I've been teaching them about my kingdom this whole time. I don't want Caesar's throne. I don't want Herod's throne. <laughs> I've got a kingdom. I've got a realm. I am Lord. I have a kingdom. My kingdom is not of this world. But he came teaching us really pre-teaching us about the kingdom and then giving us the kingdom in the Holy Ghost. Because the kingdom of God is righteousness, peace, and joy, where? In the Holy Ghost that's in you. 
So he came, did all of his thing, did all that sacrifice, the, gave us the spirit, and, and he said, even though he was teaching and pre-teaching, because <laughs> he, he was really pre-teaching because he said, now, when the spirit comes, he's going to explain this stuff to you. When the spirit comes, you're going to know all these things. When the spirit comes, he'll remind you of these things, and you'll go, ah, that's what it is now. I, now I know, because the spirit is going to give you the illumination. The spirit is going to give you the light. The spirit will be, the, will, will be me inside you opening your eyes. And you can only see this by the Spirit. In fact, we'll look at that in just a moment. In fact, let's don't go to 2 Corinthians 4 yet. Go back to 1 Corinthians 2 because we've got to look at this. 1 Corinthians chapter 2. I'm sorry, we will get there, I hope. We don't want to... We don't... What, what we have done a lot is we have taken new Christians over the years... And we have given them, by not rightly dividing the word, we've given them a Jewish mindset. We have given them, by, by and large, very much, a, an Old Testament Jewish mindset, perception of God. And then we move them over to try to talk about all this Jesus redemption and all this stuff. And now they're a little mixed up and confused because they've got a Jewish mindset thinking that what God was doing with them is, uh, with the, in the Old Testament with the Jews is what God's doing with them now. Hmm? And that's why a lot of stuff, we, I mean, it, I know it sounds pretty and it can be dressed up and it can look powerful. But a lot of things we do, a lot of people, you listen to a lot of prophetic people, and they'll, they'll go back and they'll start talking Old Testament talk and start using Old Testament allegories as something that God's doing now. Remember, all that stuff, every promise that God ever made in the old is fulfilled in Jesus Christ. Jesus has fulfilled all the promises of God are in him, yes, and in him, amen. He completed every bit of that. Everything that it was speaking of was speaking of him. That's what he said. And when he came, this was the fulfillment of all that stuff. But when we don't, we have that Jewish mindset, we don't, we, we take it, we'll go back and, and we'll say, this is what God's doing right now. And, and, it, and, it, and it, it's, 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 it's so dramatic. <laughs> and people will, ooh, and ah, and God's doing what he did back in Isaiah's day and all this. When Jesus came is what he did. When, uh, it's, it, when Jesus came is, is when what Isaiah said would happen, happened. Hmm. And so we start here. To rightly divide, we look at the, at the Jewish thing and, 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 and salvation is of the Jews. So the Old Testament is the story of God dealing with a people. Not all the other people of the world. This was God's story with the sons of Abraham. And he made this covenant with Abraham, and then there was Moses, and Moses gave them the law, and all this stuff goes on. And because we don't start with the expressed image, the true reality of God as revealed in Jesus, we start looking back in there, and we think, well, that's God there, that's God there. But remember that their descriptions, John said, but nobody had seen God at any time. It was still dark. But the light came. And, 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 I, and I've said it many times, many times that, you know, even in, in, in uh, you know, Paul even said, we know in part and we see in part. And because no one had seen God at any time, men, he's, and he said it over and over in the scriptures. He says, you grope around in darkness as a blind man. Huh? These were his people, the Jews, the, 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 the ones who had been given the law and who were walking with that and given the sacrifices and all that stuff. And he says, but you walk around in darkness. You know, when we, we hear about how God talks about their, how their disobedience and how they're going to be judged because of it in the Old Testament, it sounds very much like how Jesus was talking to the Pharisees and the Sadducees and the, 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 the Jews of that day. He was talking about, he said, woe unto you. Saul's coming upon you. How are you going to escape this judgment? And, and, and talking about that, it's kind of the same language, but when we see it in the story of Jesus, we see exactly who he's talking to here. And he's talking to people that are trying to serve God. 
He's not talking to a people that are they're out there on purpose. They're out there, you know, serving the God of Molech and burning their children in the fire and doing all this, you know, doing all these other things and making, making idols of all these other gods and bowing down to them. They're endeavoring to follow the God of the Bible, the God of Moses, and, God, and, and all this. They're, they're endeavoring to follow the one that's written of in these scriptures that are trying to get this thing right, and they're debating it and so on, and they're coming up with these, these perceptions and of, 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 of him, and Jesus says, you've got it all wrong. And essentially he says, and because you've got it all wrong, this is why you still remain in your sins. You know, he, and, and, and a destruction was coming upon him. The whole thing was about to be destroyed in that generation. In 70 A.D. it happened. Their temple was destroyed. They've never been the same. That, that, let me say it this way. That religion was never the same. It was forever changed by the destruction of Jerusalem and temple and all that stuff. And the whole idea of Judaism became something else. It became rabbinical teaching. Instead of temple sacrifice, they added more... Um, ritualistic prayer and it became more about the rabbinic teachings that's why if you study even today you start looking up some of the some of the ways that Jews have believed and believe you'll find more than anything you'll find different writings of different rabbis old and present because they take those writings as authoritative on par, if not more so, than the writings of the Old Testament scriptures. It all was going to change. Jesus was going to divide the light from the darkness. That whole system, that whole thing that they were relying on, that they had gotten from, from before that, Jesus was doing away with it. He was destroying that temple and raising up a new one, right? And it would be him and us. <laughs> Look at 1 Corinthians 2, verse 6. He says, However, we speak wisdom among those who are mature, not the wisdom of this age. Now, that's an important word because I'm, I'm New King James. King James might say, a lot of, say, this world. There are different words for world. Sometimes it's cosmos, which means the order, the arrangement, the system of this world. Sometimes it's, 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 it's the word gay, which means, it, or, or te, which means the soil or the, 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 the dirt that we walk on. Terra is the planet itself, Earth. But this word here is the word ion. We would pronounce it eon, which simply means an, an age, a season of time. And so he says, he says, it's the wisdom of this age. They were in a time. They were in a time of darkness. And even then they were looking forward to the coming of Christ, which was going to be the messianic eon or the messianic age. And this Messiah would come and they understood him as, as making Israel, you know, politically autonomous and as a part of it. And he would reign forever. Jesus, when Jesus in John chapter 12 said, said you know, I'm going to be lifted up and, 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 and I'll draw them in to me talking about the death he would die. And they're saying, like, wait a minute, if you're going to be lifted up and be crucified, why do the scriptures say, why do the, the scribes say that, that, uh, that, that the Messiah will, will reign forever? He said, I will. <laughs> hmm? But he says, but I'm going, to, I'm going to be lifted up. And he says, but now is the judgment of this world, now is the prince or ruler of this world, this age, passed out. Now watch this. He says, the wisdom of this age, nor the rulers of this age, who are coming to nothing, but we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery, <clears throat> the hidden wisdom which God ordained before the ages for our glory. What Jesus revealed to us, what the Spirit reveals to us, is that which God ordained from the beginning, for our glory. This was always his heart. This was always his will. This was always his way. Which none of the rulers of this age knew because had they known they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. Who were the ones that yelled crucify him? Huh? It was those religious people there that rejected who he was. And he was, and, and, and the, and, and he was convicted by the Jews of blasphemy. Then they took him to the Romans and made a different crime and said, well, he said, that he's, he said that he's our king. We have no king except Caesar. This is the Jews talking. They hated Caesar. <laughs> they <were> just, uh. <laughs> 
But as it is written, verse 9, I has not seen, nor ear heard, nor has it entered into the heart of man the things that God has prepared for those who love him. Notice this. It has not entered into the heart of man what God has for them. Jesus was going to bring that light. Jesus brought all of it. In Christ, we see God clear. And so, and, 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 and it's hard, and, and, and I can't, I, I, it's hard for me to explain every single scripture that comes along. Sometimes I just have to say, you know, I don't know on that one. <laughs> But what I do know is whatever the truth is, it has to go along with what we see in Jesus. His goodness, his redemption, his perfection, his, his salvation. Everything that it says about him and what he did for us is true. Everything else is seen through a glass darkly. The perception is not as clear. It says, verse 10, it says, excuse me. Nor has it entered into the heart of man the things that God has prepared for those who love him, but God has revealed them to us by what? By his spirit. Only by the spirit can you know this. Without the spirit of God, then you operate by the spirit of this world or this age. Hmm? And, and we have to understand that all men, even in their best efforts, were blinded, were under obscurity because they were still under operating according to the God of the age. And let me, let me say it this way. You can say, well, that's the devil or this or that. I'm, okay, that, that, that's fine. But, but let me submit to you that also they had a God in their mind hmm, that they were serving. And Jesus would say, you guys are, are serving this. You're doing it all wrong there. And they were trying. You know, you know, Jesus said destruction's coming upon you guys. Well, God told about the destruction in Malachi, and he says, you know, that day of the Lord's coming, it's going to come burning like an oven, and, 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 you know, and all that. And he, says, and he says, you know, why are you guys going to come under that? He says, all these things that they do, one of them was, he says, he says, woe unto you, you've robbed me. Where have you robbed me? In tithes and offerings. So these people, they're not wanting to come under that judgment and destruction. They, they're, they're wanting to be ready. So these Pharisees, and then they're tithing. <laughs> Jesus says in Luke chapter 11, verse 39, he says, Woe unto you, you Pharisees, you blind leaders of the blind. He says, you tithe even the smallest portions of your, your, your spices, your, your mint, your, your, your rue, your, 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 you tithe, you'll, you'll take your spices and give a tenth of that. But you're missing the more important matters of that law, of the law. To give generosity, justice, and or, excuse me, generosity and the love of God, mercy. You're getting the real things, and then he goes on to say, "See what you do is you wash the outside of the cup. You try to make the outside clean by giving all these little things and trying to complete all that. You don't see your perceptions wrong. You've missed what's really important: the heart of God, mercy, generosity, love, the love of God." He says, you're t you're, all you're doing is taking care of the outside. Your inside needs to be clean, right? So Jesus came to give us the real perception of God. Because the perception, the way they were relating to God, all it could do was deal with the outside. And they would work so hard. Look what they're doing. I'm not going to rob God in tithes and offerings. Not only am I giving my animals, not only am I giving my wheat, not, I mean, my mint, my spices. I mean, one-tenth. Here we go. Go into our spice cabinet and go take all those spices and measure one-tenth of it. You know, we're going to cover our bases here. But God reveals these through his spirit because the spirit searches all things, yes, the real, the deep things of God. For who knows the things of, of a man except the spirit of man that's in him? And nobody knows the things of God except the spirit of God. All you're debating is never going to get this. You're never going to understand. Your perception will never be clear in that darkness. You can only know God by the spirit of God. That's why Jesus said, so I'm going to give you my spirit and you can know me so that where I am, you can be also. He says, now we have received not the spirit of the world. Notice what he's talking about. These two things. There's a spirit of the world, which is darkness, imperception, and there's a spirit of God, which is light, perception, true knowledge of God. That we've received the spirit who's from God so that we might know the things 
that's been freely given to us by God. Verse 13, and these are the things that we speak, not in words that man's wisdom teaches, but what the Holy Spirit teaches. Comparing spiritual things with spiritual. Here's what I've found about the Holy Spirit in us. It's he'll, he'll do just what Jesus said. He will, he will speak of Jesus. He will glorify Jesus. He will point everything to him. Yeah, but God did it. He will point you to Jesus if you listen to him. I want to get in and answer questions in the, in maybe in the, the times ahead. Questions that people have. Questions people come to me with. Well, God's a God of love, but he's also a God of justice. It's so easy to disseminate that and make it clear. If we'll let the Spirit speak of Jesus, whenever we don't, whenever we don't listen by the Spirit, whenever we, we go into our own wisdom of that, we can come up with all kinds of things. And I, none of us, especially me, don't know everything at all, but what... I do know what I can be sure of, what I can tell people of with the surety is what the Spirit has said to me, that look at Jesus. It's Jesus. What's he done? Well, I'm just no good. What did Jesus do? <laughs> the Spirit will always take you to that. Even when you're having trouble in life, it's, it's Holy Spirit. What do you say about this? He will always speak of him, and you will know everything's all right. You'll know that you're loved. You'll know that you're cared for. But the natural man, verse 14, does not receive the things of the Spirit of God. They are foolishness to him, nor can the natural man know them because they are only spiritually known, spiritually discerned. Thank God for the Spirit. What will the Spirit do? He will glorify me, Jesus said. What will the Spirit do? He will speak about me, Jesus said. What will the Spirit do? He will tell you what I've said. Not what somebody else said. He will tell you what I've said. Finally, let's finish. 2 Corinthians chapter 4 my starting place. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Chapter 4, verse 3. But even if our gospel is veiled, your Bible might say hidden, covered. If our gospel is veiled, it is veiled to those who are perishing, whose minds the God of this age has blinded who do not believe lest the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ who's the image of God should shine unto them. You know what I've seen with people that struggle with I know I, I, you know, I know the Bible says God loves me but why is it so hard for me to embrace that to really feel that to really believe that because we have possibly because we've created an image of God that's according to the spirit of this world or this age. See, all the religions of the world, they have a God who's vengeful. They have a God who's, they call him just. But what that means to us as imperfect people is not good news <laughs> if he's just that way. Is God just? Yeah. Yeah. But I'll submit to you, his justice is different. My Bible says he's faithful and just to forgive us of all sin. That's justice. That's justice, especially with what Jesus did. Hmm? He forgave the, he forgave the uh, uh, you know, uh, Ninevites that Jonah went to. Jonah didn't like it. He said, that's why I didn't want to preach to him. He said, I knew you'd forgive him. <laughs> I don't think it's right. <laughs> he says, isn't it right? Isn't it, good for, isn't it good that I would forgive people like that that don't know their right hand from their left? <laughs> isn't it good? Isn't it right? <laughs> His justice is not our justice. We want to put our, our idea of justice on him. An idea of a natural mind who's looking in darkness and thinks they know what justice is when God, who is the light, says, I'll show you true justice. <laughs> You can come work the last hour of the day and get a full day's pay. That's not fair. That's not just. You don't want fair. Trust me. <laughs> you want good. That's my justice. My justice is because I'm good, I'll be good to you. 
It's what I say about tipping a waiter or a waitress. See, if you tip them according to their job, you're giving them according to man's scales, man's judgment. Well, they did a good job, I'll give them a lot. They did a bad job, I'll give them both. But if you want to tip them according to another, uh, another level of justice, a higher level of justice, you don't tip them on what they deserve. You tip them on how good you are. Well, you gave too much. Well, I think it's right. <laughs> I think it's just. <laughs> that somebody that works like that, even if they're having a bad day, should get a good tip. <laughs> That's justice to me. You see the, dif see the difference in mindset with God? For it is God, verse 6. Oh, wait, wait a minute, back up. If our gospel's hid, it's hid to those who are perishing. The God of this age has blinded who do not believe. I find people struggle because they're the image of, 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 of God. That, and remember, that before Jesus comes, the image of God... Even though the scriptures are right and inspired by God, but the image of God that people got from that was an image that of, 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 a, of a wisdom of this world. And that's why all the religions have a similarity of that type of God. And when Jesus came, he says, this is God. And they're like, <laughs> oh, no, it's not. <laughs> this is God. What I said is God. So what they said was God. It kills the woman who sinned. It shuns the man who's a thief. It stays away from the sick and the lepers. And he said, woe to you. You watch the outside of the cup but not the inside. And then you put heavy burdens on people and do nothing to help them. How can that be justice? <laughs> the wisdom of God, not as natural man speaks. He says, the God of this age has blinded lest the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who's the image of God, should shine upon them. My friends, you and I, the light has come. Arise, shine, for your light has come. I'm not taking an Old Testament prophecy and promising that the glory of God's going to rise upon you next year. <laughs> Arise and shine, your light has come. His name is Jesus. He is that light. There is no other. <laughs> and he's alive and he's well and he's with you and he's in you and he's never going to leave you or forsake you. You've got that light all the time and now you can know God. <laughs> and all you got to do is just, just let him be. Just let him talk. We were listening to that old song by the Beatles. M Mother Mary comes to me speaking words of wisdom. Let it be. Well, that was very true because when Gabriel said you're going to have a baby, she said, that can't be done. And finally she says, let it be. <laughs> what do you do when God says something good's going to happen? Say, let it be. When it looks like you can't get out of any situation and God says, but I'm a God who can deliver. Say, then let it be. And it's not up to you. Just let it be. What do you do when God says that God says there is a way, there is hope, and I am more powerful than this, and I've got you, and I'm going to lead you through, and I'm going to lead you out of this? Then you say, okay, let it be according as you have said. Are you all hearing this? He says, Christ, who's the image of God, would shine upon them because we're not preaching ourselves. We're preaching Jesus Christ our Lord. What's the Holy Spirit talk about? Him. What's the Holy Spirit remind us of? Him. Who does the Holy Spirit glorify? Him. Not us, not our flesh, not our efforts. Not our strength. For we don't preach ourselves, but Jesus Christ our Lord, and ourselves we are bond servants for Jesus' sake, because it's God who commanded light to shine out of that darkness, who has shined in our hearts. Look up the word, photo, whatever. It means radiate brilliantly. He has radiated brilliantly in our hearts in order to give the light of the knowledge of God, the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. Habakkuk 2 said, said that all the earth shall be filled with the knowledge of the glory of God. Let's stand up. Whew, a light has come in the darkness. We start with the light. It's all about Jesus. This is why we worship him. Father, <laughs> again, I, we, we thank you for your unspeakable gift. We celebrate you. We, um, we're happy. <laughs> and we thank you for the hope that we have. We thank you that we, that you, 
you've been so good to us to cause us to, to know, to see you, to believe in you. Um, there are no words. And even with everything that I've said, only your spirit can show us how good you are. And I thank you for loving each and every one of us and being good to every one of us in such a close, personal way as if we were the only one on earth. It's amazing how you do that. But I thank you, Father, for your life, that blessing of life upon every one of us here. We are different. And we give you all the thanks in Jesus' name. Amen.